uh, to get through this. Now, I want you to turn with me to Daniel chapter 3. And I did one part this morning. I'm going to do a second part. Daniel chapter 3. Thank you. Amen. Uh, and the tape table's out there, and, and they'll bless you. I, I know they will now. Uh, thank God. Uh, in Daniel chapter 3, I want to note verse 13, verse 16 through 19. I want to do something that is, that is a little different because now I want you also to turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 12. We'll read the narrative from Daniel, and I'm going to support the narrative from Daniel with philosophical theology from Corinthians. Now, my homiletics teacher wouldn't like this, uh, neither would my hermeneutics professor, but I, I think I'm right this time. Uh, in, in Daniel 3, and, and to tell you a little bit about what's happening in Daniel, uh, well, since you're standing, we'll, we'll read it first. Uh, in 13, the Nebuchadnezzar in his rage and fury commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought these men before the king. Shadrach, Meshach, in 16 now, after, of course, they came before the king and he said, I heard you didn't bow and you don't worship our gods and uh, he asked is it true and he says now before they answered he said I tell you what I'll give you another chance to do as I ask now in 16 Shadrach Meshach and Abednego answered and said to the king oh Nebuchadnezzar we are not careful to answer thee in this matter if it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace. And he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Now notice in 13, Nebuchadnezzar was in his rage and fury. But look at 19. He was full of fury and the form of his visage was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace one seven times more than it was wont to be heated. My, my, my. Look at your neighbor and say, nobody's mad but the devil. Nobody. Now, in 2 Corinthians 12, I just want to read one verse or two verses, nine, and 10 and he said unto me my grace is sufficient for thee for my strength is made perfect in weakness most gladly therefore will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me Therefore I take pleasure in infirmities and reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. Whew. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Uh, look at somebody next to you and say, just, just tell them, you need and if not clause look at somebody around you and say everybody needs and if not clause 
Ah. A week ago, I, I was in Memphis preaching for Bishop G.E. Patterson. As I was leaving the hotel on the way to church, in, 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 a, in, a, in a stretch limousine that he owns, I was listening to the radio and I heard an evangelist, or rather just a lady giving a testimony, listening to the radio station on the way to the church. And I was wondering why was the service on the on the station and, and the fella said of course that's because we own the station so uh, I understood it then <laughs> uh, she was discussing or testifying of the fact that she raked leaves and she was a leaf raker on this estate and finally, the lady who she raked the leaves for, the lady died. And they found her will, and in her will, she left the lady who was raking the leaves about 30 or 40 million. And, uh, they found another box in the house, and the lady left her the real estate all holdings that amounted to another hundred million. And they found another box. And ultimately, after all the findings came in, the lady who was raking the leaves ended up with over two hundred million dollars. And I wanted to know were there any more leaves? In the same service, when Beverly Crawford got up to sing, she asked that this service and her song be dedicated to another lady who was on her way by plane to Memphis. And she was sick with cancer and she was dreadfully sick, so sick that they had to turn the plane around and take her back home. In the same service, one lady gets up and testifies ebulliently of having picked up 200 million and in the same service, we had to pray for a lady who wanted to be there so bad, but was too sick to get there. I was wondering, as I heard it, is it possible that the one who had to turn around, is it possible, is it, is it conceivable that she didn't know the Lord as well as the one who received the 200 million. It's possible. And the answer comes back that in the same service where one receives 200 million and another can't get there because of cancer, that the same God of the one who receives 200 million is the same God of the woman who was sick with cancer. It tells me then that in any given time, as the children of God, 
there is one on the far spectrum of success and blessings and there's another who has to deal with my grace is sufficient it does not mean that the person who is living on the 200 million dollar level is any more spiritual than the woman who is dying of cancer but what it shows us is that everybody needs an if not clause I want you to stay with me here today uh, September 11th has shaken a lot of theology and a lot of theology has got to be fixed now uh, 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 yes a lot of stuff got to be fixed uh, I will point out with you that most of us sitting in here today really don't serve the Lord to hear my grace is sufficient I'm going to propose that just very carefully can you imagine being celibate for 10 years and just saving yourself for the right man and serving the Lord with gladness in anticipation of a wonderful husband and while you're praying in the middle of the night calling out to God he whispers and says to you I know you've been faithful but you're not going to ever be married but my grace uh, is sufficient you've given in every offering and you've tithed faithfully you have raked leaves and you have done everything you should do but for the rest of your life you're going to struggle financially but my grace is sufficient you're praying for your mother to be healed and you're trusting and believing God for her healing the doctor says something's wrong with the child in your womb and you're praying that this child come out all right but nobody really wants to lose a mother and nobody wants a child to be deformed particularly when I've given my life to God and so it becomes extremely difficult for me to hear from God my grace is sufficient I propose to you and as quiet as it is that most of us aren't serving God to hear that and particularly the way Christianity has been marketed so when the trials come and we're standing in face of an enemy who dared to transgress our boundaries everybody in the house of God is running around asking where is the Lord because nobody wants to deal with my grace is sufficient I, I was at 35 the doctor said that I had a heart attack and uh, and I have an arrhythmic heart but he said I had a heart attack start giving me heart attack books and and I was sitting in the room in the hospital room and I'm saying to myself as faithful as I have been I mean I, I was going to church coming from church or I was in church and I'm saying now if anybody should have a heart attack why me I, I said Lord I can think of 50 people right now uh, 
uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's increasingly more difficult when you are walking like you ought to walk living like you ought to live and making sacrifices for the things of God and for God not to do what you ask and so it's increasingly difficult for somebody walking right when you want to be delivered from something or you want God to bless you with something for God to hold it and whisper in your ears I'm not going to do it but my grace is sufficient oh God uh, uh, touch your neighbor and say everybody's got to go through something mm. Uh, the theology here of, 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 of Corinthians becomes the substratum by which the Hebrew boys can declare, if not, because the grace is sufficient clause releases God to do whatever he chooses to do without having a problem from his child. The, the, you see, you see the, the comparison here is that when he says my grace is sufficient he is literally saying I am enough I am enough without the trappings I am enough without the trim I am enough naked without clothes without house without land just to have me is having more than anything you can have uh, now uh, can I can I take my time you know uh, I can holler anytime I can mm, anytime now now I want you to understand this that the grace is sufficient can only become necessary in a God forsaken circumstance uh, you got to stay with me here in order to release grace is sufficient I am enough God has to withdraw his protection in order to bring you to another level of relationship he has to withdraw and allow the attack in order to show you grace is sufficient you, you see there is there is there will never be a grace is sufficient if he does what you ask but when he doesn't do what you ask or he allows the enemy in on you then he switches to a grace is sufficient mode uh, let's go further here the enemy was marching around Job and moving around Job and what the enemy discovered was that Job had a hedge around him. The hedge around Job is the presence of God because God's presence keeps the enemy out. The enemy then challenges God and says, Job doesn't serve you for nothing. If you gave me what you gave Job, I'd serve you too. The accusation is an awful accusation because what it says is, God, you have to buy your friends. Nobody really wants you for you. It's what you give them. And so all God did was say, let's prove it then. And he withdrew his presence. When he withdrew his presence, the enemy rushed in but when the enemy rushed in God rushed in too and said my grace is sufficient uh, it's important now that, that he has to withdraw or at that moment you feel God forsaken for him to become my grace Grace is sufficient. I want to show you that without anything, I am all that you need. 
ah, this is the meat now for if not because if he brings us out fine if he doesn't bring us out fine but we do know his grace is sufficient whether I'm brought out or I got to go through as long as I got God with me I'll make it oh, I want to take you a little further here the if not clause then becomes the power to keep on living you see because anybody can wait for deliverance and suspend their lives till it comes but the if not clause says devil I am going to live my life and you do the best you can as it relates to dealing with me because my grace is sufficient for thee is God saying to me my strength is made perfect in your weakness oh, I'm going to go theologically now the perfect clause is used here the perfect case is used when he says my grace is sufficient because he is saying that he didn't just say it one time and forgotten it but he says it in the past with the present results that it is still in force there is a trial that God has to talk to you in the middle of it every day there is a circumstance that you know he can change but he won't change but in the middle of that circumstance he talks to you every day <laughs> I'm with you, I'm with you. I know it hurts, but I'm here. I know you want it different, but I'm here. I know you want to move it, but I'm here. Am I enough? Can you handle it? Can you stay with me? Can you still praise me? Can you still lift me up? I know you don't want to be here, but I'm here. It is, it is, it, he has to constantly do it. One writer says the answer was simply something past but something which continued in its consoling power. Weiner says, and I quote, Paul says the answer was ever sounding in his ears, and not in his ears only, but in those of all of God's children who suffered from that day to this. When he says, my grace is sufficient, it's a metanome. He really says, my love is enough. I am good enough enough just me if you have nobody else but me that's enough if you have nothing but me that's enough you see this now becomes the substratum that secures every good thing that God gives because he declares my loving kindness is better than life itself and here now is God having the freedom to sustain us but he also has the freedom to display his all-sufficient power what we have done is we have locked God into our expectations and when he does anything out of our expectation we act like he ceases to exist God is still God when he does what you want and when he doesn't do what you want oh God I feel it here oh, I got to work with this one today it is clear then that the writer understands and he says now my strength is made perfect in weakness now this weakness is not sinful weakness but it's better translated personal infirmity and an infirmity would not be an infirmity unless there was a challenge it is the greatness of the challenge that shows the individual how weak they are as long as there is no challenge we can walk around and talk about how strong we are in God we can walk around and talk about for God I'll live and for God I'll die because there is no challenge 
but in face of the enemy who strikes suddenly and all of a sudden we find out that with all of our money and all of our riches we don't have any real control over our boundaries the enemy can sneak in and upset us one day because we really don't have any control over what other people can do to us now in face of the challenge God has to move into my grace is sufficient and tell us keep on living because you don't protect yourself anyway I am the power behind you oh I feel God in here I, I, this morning I dealt with the fear side of this text and one thing about fear is it's very subjective oh yes it's the enemy moving in your circumstance to influence your mind it's in the awesomeness of the enemy who becomes the object of your fear but remember my grace is sufficient says that when you're looking at the object of your fear turn and look at the object of your faith then compare the object of your faith with the object of your fear and tell the enemy I am a conqueror I don't have to wait till the battle's over I'm a conqueror right now oh I feel God in this house you notice then that the writer now points out that there's no commingling of power here what God is saying through Paul is that when you are at your weakest it is my opportunity to show you my strength I become conspicuous when you get out of the way and all I gotta do to get you out of the way is to raise up a challenge that is so great you know you can't handle it and when you know you can't handle it you'll turn to me and say Lord strut your stuff mm, I feel the Spirit of God and so now there is no commingling here the weaker you are the more conspicuous he is and I think just for a moment on the 11th the Lord just moved from the protection and became grace is sufficient and that showed us that we were not as prepared as we thought we were because if the folk in the street don't know where God is then certainly we in the church ought to know where he is and tell your neighbors don't give up hope because the God I serve not only is he able but he will but if not stop by my church this Sunday and watch us praise the name of the Lord I'm gonna have some church in here today uh, do I have a few more minutes he does not mean he did not mean our glory in infirmities than other things but I'd rather experience the sustenance of God than to be delivered from everything because he said when I'm going through I have God's power resting on me he then takes us to relationship because what he's dealing with now is the fact that my relationship with God is not limited to life but it is eternal and he does not have to tell me when I'm going to die he's not doesn't have to tell me when he's coming back everybody has gone eschatological with this event and everybody's trying to see what does this say about the return of the Lord and what sign is this Jesus long said a wicked and perverse generation looks for a sign oh, how might I put this you have a significant other 
uh, I hope a wife, the wife has a key to your house. <laughs> And she's got a key to the house and she's got the burglar alarm code she comes and goes when she gets ready she does not have to call you when she's coming because she's got a key to the house y'all have that kind of relationship now if you take the key back change the code and you say now call me before you come that means I might be doing something that I have to stop doing if you come uh, I hope I can talk to you touch your neighbor said don't take the key back from God uh, yeah Lord you can have the key because you can come whenever you get ready because I'll be ready when you come oh God I feel it he might not keep you from dying but anybody who can raise you from the dead he can let you die oh, that's why in face of the enemy you don't back up and act like if God don't bring me out it's bad no devil I know he's able I believe he will but if not I'm still going to the mall I feel like having church in here oh, touch your neighbor say keep on living the devil is a defeated foe it is clear then that he has challenged us he has challenged us in the situation because he had to take us to God forsakenness to show us his other side there is no way to get a revelation of Jehovah Roa if you're healthy so what God does is he forsakes your health for a moment allows the sickness to come then when he comes back and heals you he can express himself as Jehovah Roa now if you don't want that experience then you want to be healthy all the time but if God wants to show you something he has to work out the situation to show it oh I feel like preaching uh, let me take it further the Lord wants to move America to another position so if the Lord keeps protecting and keeps covering when he wants to take us to another place then we will never move what he does is he withdrew his presence and he allows the enemy to come in when the enemy comes in we begin to say now where is God where is the Lord and then we find him over here well what he did was he forsook that spot he came in this spot so he could direct you as to where he wants you to be I feel like preaching he forsook your last job so you got fired but you found him in the new job because that's where he wants you to be I don't know Mr. Preacher here oh God I feel it here you have to understand this that the forsakenness is a means for my grace is sufficient well the Hebrew boys understood that they didn't have the philosophy of Paul as we do but they understood that God's grace is sufficient and they didn't argue with the fact that we're doing your will and look at the mess we're in now Nebuchadnezzar was nothing to play with remember now that at age 25 he was world ruler at age 25 I have a 25 year old daughter who will jump on my back all six foot of her will run and jump in my arms and say daddy here I come and she's 25 now think with me of a mentality at 25 that's now world ruler that's Nebuchadnezzar at the age of 17 he conquered the city called Nineveh 
and it was then an impregnable city 60 miles in circumference with a wall that was so wide that four chariots could ride around it and Nebuchadnezzar conquered it one night and plowed it like farmland at 25 he controls 50,000 men called Scythians the meanest men who have ever lived and history says these men would tie men hand and foot to chariots and bet to see how quickly they could split them in two Nebuchadnezzar went to Jerusalem when Egypt and Jerusalem were making an alliance Jeremiah said don't do that but they did now I want to show you that Nebuchadnezzar goes up to Jerusalem sieges the city until mothers are eating their babies right in the middle of town when the city finally falls Nebuchadnezzar goes up to the king takes both his sons and decapitates them in his sight then he gouges the king's eyes out so that the last thing Zedekiah saw was his sons losing their heads the book tells me history that he took his tongue and he nailed it to his chin put him backwards on a horse and marched across the desert Nebuchadnezzar is nothing to play with now he takes out of Israel Daniel Hananiah Mishael and Azariah you know them as Shadrach Meshach and Abednego he took them in the entourage back home and he puts up an idol of himself and he says now everybody when you hear the music bow now I want you to see something here they're looking at the king but God is not seen they're looking at Nebuchadnezzar and he is an object of fear they look him in the face and say we are not careful to answer so you concerning this matter you not know I know you not that's why you got to have folk around you who have faith in God and not in circumstance you need some folk around you who say now how are we gonna represent boys cuz I know we standing in front of a mad man now what you all gonna do and I can hear Zachary saying that because I don't care what he does I'm standing up for my God you gotta have some word in you when the enemy I wish I could preach I wish I could preach I send me two brothers here I need some help come on come on up here real quick you see in face of the enemy you got to have a deposit and what the boys had was a deposit you stay right here the Bible does not give me anything for my back I've got a breastplate of righteousness a helmet of salvation feet shod with the preparation of the gospel my waist learned with the glurred goings of truth and I've got the sword of the spirit shield of faith but I ain't got nothing for my back because God don't expect me to run from the enemy I feel like preaching in here today oh I feel the Holy Ghost when I face the enemy and all he's got to say I need to be able to lean back on God and say now your grace is sufficient give me a word uh, no weapon formed against me shall prosper uh, give me a word I will keep them in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on me give me a word give me a word the Lord is the strength of my life I feel like preaching in here give somebody high five said the Lord is talking to me oh Lord give me a word resist the devil and he'll somebody say you need a if not clause thank you brothers you need 
and if not clause what you gonna do boys we gonna do what we've always been doing we're gonna do what we always have done we have never worshipped their gods and we're not about to start now but the enemy is on us it really doesn't matter can I take you just a little further it is important to understand that when they looked at the king they said we are not careful the God we serve is able if you came to my bedroom and I was sick with cancer and you told me he was able you wouldn't have told me anything I already know he's able but I want you to tell me will he because knowing knowledge says he's able faith says he will but if not says I'm committed to God no matter how it turns out I feel the Holy Ghost in here shake somebody's hand and say neighbor I'm committed to praise if I lose my house shake somebody I'm committed to praise if I lose my car I'm committed to lifting him up if I never get married I'm committed to walk with him if I don't have a friend in the world because I've already decided that I love Jesus best of all I'm talking to America this morning I'm talking to everybody that'll hear my voice the enemy will stop you dead if you don't have an if not clause I feel like shouting in here can I reach a little more I'm getting ready to quit tell your neighbor I'll meet you in the mall honey I tell somebody I'll meet you in the place Uh, we ain't gonna die here we not dead till we dead and devil you already shot your best shot and I'm still standing I'm still walking I feel the Spirit of God y'all pray for me this morning but I tell the boys looked at the king looked him dead in the face and said the praise starts right here I don't need God on the outside when I already got him inside so king I know he's able I believe he will but I'm standing up to you now I'm looking at you right now and I'm saying do what you want to do because I'm a worshiper I'm a praiser and I'm gonna lift him up right in front of your face cuz I'm not bowing I feel like preaching shake somebody's hand and say when you don't dance to the devil's music you're already dancing to God's music tell the devil I ain't got time to switch partners now I've been with Jesus too long I can't come with you now so do what you gotta do do what you gotta do but I like what God has blessed me with and I'm gonna keep on keeping on I've got to close but I feel an anointing in here somebody's coming out of it pull on your neighbor say come out of it come on touch somebody else say shake it off it's time to praise God shake it off it's time for the devil to get it back shake it off it's time to go on with your life pick up every dream pick up every plan everything you thought about doing before the 11th go back and get it and let the enemy know I'm living I'm praising I'm doing the will of God can I preach just two more minutes give somebody a high five and say look in the fire look in the fire devil look in the fire you put in three but there's a fourth one there's somebody else in the fire I feel the Holy Ghost tell your neighbor you're not alone we don't see him but he's walking with you they don't see him but he's holding your hand they don't see him 
but he's all in your spirit. They don't see him, but he's all over you. But when you get to the fire, they will find out you got more power than they thought you had. Well, you got more joy than they thought you had. I feel an anointing in here. Give somebody a high five. Say, I got God with me. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? I feel like praising him. I feel like lifting him up. If I get a car, fine. If I don't get another, fine. If I get money, fine. Don't get another dime, fine. But you can't tell the difference when you see me in church. I'll be praising him like I got a million. I'll be lifting him up like I got a private plane. Because I told the devil, if not, I'm still gonna serve him. If not, I'm still gonna praise him. If not, I'm still gonna love him. If not, I'm still a child of God. If not. Yeah! Yeah! yeah. You got a life to live. You got a God to serve. You got a God to praise. You got to show the world he's still our God and we will overcome. If not, if not, look at somebody and say, if not, I'll still be doing what I've always been doing, praising. The name of my God, if not. Whatever it is you face, it may not be national, very individual, trials on a day-to-day -day basis that none of us are exempt from. And our theology must now begin to give us a holistic view of our God and for us to understand that Christianity does not mean exemption from catastrophe yes this is why so many people are disillusioned because we have not given the holistic attitude so people can understand our God our God did not save us just for time experiences but he died for eternal relationship with us if you don't have an if not clause you will not live your life in the face of this terror because your only thoughts 
are the person is a person preservation of your body and your stuff notice now how this dastardly act I, I did say D didn't I that, that yes uh, this act equalized all of us it equalizes everything because it don't matter how much money you have if you can't go 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 shopping Whew. now the if not clause says my relationship with the Lord is already settled and I have resolved the issue of dying amen personally I have done it two ways the first way is I've gotten myself right with God and the second thing is I put everything I got in trust for my kids so if we're going down I know where my soul's going and I know where my money's going <laughs> now if you don't have the relationship with God then you're going to sit around here trying to preserve the only thing you do have and that's this life see but I'm not gonna get an everlasting life when I die I already have it so now I am not going to allow myself to be crippled by somebody who would rather I live in fear than actually to kill me he's not trying to kill all of us he just want to kill a few in a certain what manner that we die while we're living But when you have an if not clause what you do is you say to the enemy the God I serve he's able we know he can do that and we believe he will not let you mess with us that's on God able willing that's on God the if not is on me I want you to know devil it's two of us over here one of us can do anything to you he want to do anytime he gets ready <laughs> cause he is bad he's tough that's why I'm with him but now he's not only outside of me he's also in me and so if he don't do anything outside of me he's already done enough in me for me to keep on living my life because you can't hurt me unless he allows you to and whenever he allows you to he is grace I feel the Holy Ghost in here yes take one person by both hands get one person by both hands look them right in the face say, I'm gonna pray for you now that you restore your life you're gonna start living again you're gonna start living again you're too blessed let the enemy scare you out of your blessings squeeze one hand 
Father, you said whatsoever things we bind on earth are bound in heaven. I bind fear. I bind low self-esteem. I bind depression. I bind depression right now. I bind that, this event. Lord God has got us down and down.